What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode two of Dark Knights. Uh, I mean, let's not mess around. Let's get right into it. I hear him mumble something inaudible before he disappears down another street. Fishers are always some troublesome. He called me a small girl, even though he was small himself. Did I not say it? Get around him. Come back in there. Here's on. Work overseas where they call me in the dumb girl. Too sleepy right now. Trishy Patricia, what is it, Cookie? Did you get in the train? Why'd you ask me? There's a rumor. I was just dreaming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Look at this place. I got bored. I'm trying to be nicer. Luigi. There we go. Shortly afterwards, we'll begin a trip to the forest. I suppose he wants to show the class of Monument. He claims the pictures in the books are nothing compared to the real thing. The monument, the monument we will be visiting is only a 15 minute walk from our school. I know that Ikuya, Ikuya is not looking forward to this trip. She holds my hand tightly the whole time. Everyone, don't stray from the path. You don't want to get lost here. Make sure not to destroy the wa disturb the wildlife either. Man, there's something going on with my reader today. I never knew the forest could be this beautiful. I'm relieved that Ikuya doesn't seem scared anymore. Guess this field trip turned out to be even more educational than expected. I've never seen this place before. Well, not recently. I got lost during a class picnic once when I was in kindergarten. This looks different from what I remember. Anyway, we, we, should we ask Mr. Blanchett about that demon rumor? Don't mention that. You're ruining the mood. Let me ask him. Oh, snap. Excuse me, Mr. Blanchett. Do you know anything about the demon rumors? Uh, the OG. Well, the teacher lets out a sigh and scratches the top of his head. Give me a second on that. Oh, yeah. Alright. You don't believe in them, do you? Not in the slightest. This forest is home to many different species of animals. Some silly people probably mistook one of them for a demon. Besides, there's no proof of their existence. The legends about this forest were just stories made up to scare the little children. What about the missing tourists? Are their disappearances only coincidences? I don't think they disappeared. It is very easy to get lost in the forest without a map or guide. That's probably what happened to them. A rescue team will find them soon. Just stay in the group and you won't have anything to worry about. I see. What did Mr. Blanchard say? He believes it's all made up. I don't believe a thing about this demon. Still, the rumors have piqued my curiosity. There's at least a grain of truth to every story. Something must have caused the villagers to feel restless. Hey, what do you guys think about doing a little expedition of our own? That sounds interesting. But, but those missing tourists. What if we get lost too? Don't worry, I have a map. And we can always send for help with this torch. Really? You'll set the forest on fire with that. Why do you even have that? This isn't the Middle Ages. Just kidding. I got a phone with me. Can you even get signal out here? Mr. Blanchett will... Uh, don't worry, Akua. I'm sure everything will go smoothly. If something does happen, you can blame it on me. <laughs> sure, but that doesn't guarantee our safety. Uh, stop overthinking it. In theory, anything can happen. In reality, chances are we'll be fine. It will just be like a walk in the park. The worst thing that can happen to us is getting lost. Of course that would be the worst. Don't tell me you planned for this to happen. Nah, it just occurred to me. I haven't been to the forest in a while. This place looked worse in my memories. Yeah, this place does look too nice for a demon to live in. While we were here, we can look for the missing tourists. Well, I'm up for it. Come with us, Akuya. I think it'll be fun. It totally won't go horrible at all. <laughs> Fine. Everyone gather together and let's go. The students line up in small groups. The teacher makes sure everyone is present before moving on. When do we sneak out? Let's head to the back of the line. He won't be able to see us there. 
As the group follows the path, we go the other way. A few minutes later, we end up at a fork in the path. Look, a crossroad. Which path should we take? <coughs> According to the map, the right path goes farther into the forest while the left one leads to a waterfall. I right clicked again. Let's go to the waterfall. I don't think there's anything of interest around here. Excited. Luigi skips ahead. Yahoo! After a few minutes of walking, we reach the waterfall. A large shimmering lake ringed by lily pads rests at the bottom of it. Can I see it? The cliff face of the waterfall also has a path of rocks lined along it, providing easy access to the other side of the water. You're not gonna let me see it? The water is so clear I can see the bottom. Let me see it! Whoa, it's huge! The water looks... The water looks so sparkly. I want to jump right in. You get excited over the simplest things, don't you? <laughs> there might be dangerous animals or bacteria in that water. Bacteria. If you jump into it, you'll probably get eaten alive. Boo, you always ruin my fun. Leoji chuckles at her reaction. I take a closer look at the lake. I can hear the sound of birds singing, but there does not seem to be any other animals around. These rocks could serve as perfect seats. Patricia, come over here. I'm going to, have to explore for a bit. I'll be back soon. We'll be waiting here. Don't go too far, okay? I know. Don't worry. I skip over to the right side of the waterfall, trying to see what is behind the stream of water. To my surprise, there seems to be a hidden cave. From the corner of my eye, I notice a shadow moving in the bushes. It moves so fast that my eyes can't make out what it is. It doesn't help that I was not paying attention. Whatever it is, I'm pretty sure it just went into the cave. I look towards the entrance and notice another path of rocks leading inside. Curiosity gets the best of me, and I have to take a look. I carefully make my way across the rocks. Oh, right clicked again. I'm good at right clicking. After I manage to get behind the waterfall, I peer around the cave. I can't see anything in the darkness. The sound of falling water echoes around me. It sounds real nice. <laughs> I wish I had my phone room with me so I could use its flashlight. What could be back there? I know I saw something head in a moment ago, but I can't see anything. Why did I just randomly follow this random thing? Was it just my imagination? I try to shout, but the sound of crashing water overpowers my voice. As I walk deeper into the cave, I try again. Hello? Is anybody there? Nailed it. <laughs> I call out a third time, but I can only hear the echo of my voice. I hear footsteps behind me. Surprised, I turn around. A shadow stands at the entrance. That's the opposite of a shadow. H Who's there? I can tell from the person's build that he's a man. But due to the darkness and him being really made out of pure, just pure white, I can't make out his facial features. Who are you? I shout again, this time louder. Who are you? Stop yelling. I'm not deaf. The man suddenly starts walking towards me. Surprised by his movements, I step back. I slip on the wet, uneven surface and fall flat on the ground. <laughs> sound effects, man. Sound effects. Uh, ouch. A hand reaches out to me, and I'm surprised by the man's kindness. Holy crap. He's animu as... AF. Light suddenly filters through the waterfall, and I can finally see his face. Are you are you hurt? No, I'm okay. Right click again, right click again. Dan. I take his hand and pull myself up. He gazes at me with his narrow, violet eyes, but I am more drawn to the long crimson hair he has tied into a loose braid. That looks like a tight braid. 
The man's delicate facial features contrast with his muscular torso and wide shoulders. What are you, interested in this man? He is wearing odd traditional clothing. Was it odd or traditional? <coughs> the collar around his neck raises a lot of questions. I've never encountered anyone like him in the village. You're disturbing my peace with your shouting. That, that was so blunt and rude. You didn't answer me. I'm guessing you're one of the tourists. Tourists? Can't you see that I'm a student? How did you discover this cave? Are you lost? I mean, I don't know. I walked five feet. Turned left. Saw you jump into the waterfall and was like, Hell yeah, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm jumping right in that. No, I wanted to... Follow the path outside and never come back. This is private property. Wait, who are you? What are you doing here? How did you know about the Taurus? And don't ask so many questions at once. Don't just cut me off. Answer me. Never mind that. Go back to your group already. But the man mostly grabs me by the wrist and pulls me back to the cave entrance. I was then ejected from the game. <laughs> Stay away from this place. The man effortlessly pushes me out of the cave. I turn around to complain, but he's already gone. He disappeared as mysteriously as he appeared. What a rude guy. It's not like the cave is his property or anything. Hmm. This reminds me of how I treated that first year kid. Alright guys. I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Uh, it's, I'm hoping it's one of those, you know, slow starters. I mean, heck, we're still in the prologue. It's one of those slow starters. So if y'all are interested, I'll definitely keep making more. I want to see what happens. I'm sure y'all do too. Music's a little whack, but we'll go with it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think, or if you think this is good, or Lottie Scoop, you know. Anyway. I'm Pyrotechnic, thank you for watching, and I'll see you when I make another one.